Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and I am here with the last segment in our ongoing clutch series. I'll be working with these two gorgeous prints today. We're going to be crafting a half moon double zip art case. You can of course use it for anything that you like. Here's how mine turned out. There are two zipper pockets on each side and then this project closes with a tie closure at the bottom. That closure is a multi-purpose. You can place this little half moon clutch on a handlebar. Um, think baby stroller, shopping cart, chair, um, railing, you get the gist. You can position that right on top of there and then secure it at the base and then access the zip pockets and the contents of those on both sides. I'm using mine to hold my Jane Davenport watercolor pens and it's just perfect for art supplies but I imagine that this could have a lot of awesome uses. So I used a 12 inch plate as my template to get my four 12 inch circles. You can make yours smaller or larger. As always, I have a, a one page PDF, a design board, which includes all the pattern measurements and your supply list for this project. You can purchase that for a nominal fee in my Etsy pattern shop. I'll link to that down in the notes below. And then of course our Sospire patrons receive a complimentary copy as a way to say thank you to them for their support throughout the year. It really is our Sospire patrons that make these videos possible. So we are all very grateful for their support. Thank you Sospire patrons. We have our upcoming Sospire patron gift exchange. Registration for that will begin on Monday. If you are interested in being a part of a very close-knit group of creators, specifically sewists, you're welcome to join us over there. You'll find the link for the Patreon community down in the notes as well, as links to my social media profiles and more. So please do have a look after this segment. So we are going to get started right away and I will show you how to craft this awesome reversible half moon double zip clutch. Does that sound like fun? Let's get started. Okay, so for this project, you are going to need four 12 inch circles. Two of those are going to be backed with quilt batting, fusible fleece, or another um, lightly padded interfacing of your choice. And I have those right here. And what I did is I just took a dinner plate and I traced that pattern and then I cut out my four 12 inch circles. We're going to take the remaining two 12 inch circles, which do not have any interfacing, but you could use something lightweight and feasible like Pelon 808 or 809. And we're going to press those in half, wrong sides facing. And we want to attach a zipper to these two half moons. So you're going to need two zippers which are 12 and a half inches long from end to end. I trimmed a much longer zipper, but I wanted to preserve this zipper tape here where there are no zipper teeth because these are metal teeth and I need to be able to sew through them. So you can use zipper by the yard. You can cut down a longer zipper. You just wanna make sure your zipper spans your 12 inches. So in my case, I have the little excess at this end here. I want to take a slightly larger than the zipper tape is wide piece of material 
and position that right sides facing on the end of that zipper that's not finished and stitch right across there. Now I cannot stitch through those metal zipper teeth without breaking a needle. So I'm gonna hand crank through those teeth. And the point of this is just to give you that little gap at the end that you have at this end here. So I'm going to repeat that for both of my zippers. And then I want to press over that edge a half an inch and stitch that down. I'm going to repeat that with the second half moon. And let me just explain to you the logic for folding that over. You want to keep the size of this circle aligned with the size of your body panel. So if you did not fold that over, your circles would line up perfectly even here in the center and that won't work for our purposes. We need to create a little channel here and that's the easiest way to maintain the integrity of the circle and allow us to have our zippers is to fold that fabric over at the top. So if you put that lip in towards the center, um, it just looks like you stitched across. So now what we want to do is attach our zippers to these half moons. And so I'm just going to line that up and give myself the space that I need to stitch around the edges here. So I want to make sure that using my 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to clear those zipper teeth. So center your zipper and take care with that and then you can pin or tape that in place so it doesn't shift. Now I want a little trim piece at the top of that zipper. So this is a 3 by 12 and a half inch cut of material which I press just like a strap. So I folded that in half brought those edges inward on the center line, press that over again. Only thing is I want to open it up so the raw edges stay in the middle. And I'm going to use this as the top trim for both of these half moons. So I need to get the other zipper pinned in place. And then I'm going to bring my circles together and position this little trim piece on each side. Here's what the underside of that looks like. And so now what I want to do is stitch on each side of each zipper as close as I can to the teeth. Now I have this circle with two zippers here and I love how my stripes are vertical and horizontal. You can have so much fun with a great stripe. I found this print at Joann's. Um, believe it or not, both of these are from Joann's and I think they're really gorgeous, especially since this is going to be an art clutch. They're just perfect. So. Now my zipper is installed and I have my stops in place at both ends. So now I want to bring back over one of the 12 inch circles with the quilt batting. This is going to be the interior lining. So this is what you will see when you unzip your pocket and you look inside of there. So I'm going to have that right side facing up and position my zipper panel, which is the interior 
on top of that and I want to align the circle and maintain the integrity of that and I'm going to stitch right down the center of that zipper trim which I have a nice press line there because of how I folded that like a strap. Okay and that stitch line is going to divide my pocket. Now I do want to run one more row of stitching closer to the line that I attached the zipper with and that's just so I can close off that pocket here from these raw edges. You could probably get away without that second row of stitching but I think it it's a nice touch. So you're basically coming in right in between that channel again with another row of stitching. And now there are five gorgeous rows of stitching right through the center there. So it is ribbed and uh, looks really nice. Now I want to bring over my remaining circle. I'm going to open up these zippers just a bit here. And before I place that right sides facing on this, I want to create two little ties. And so these are two inch by 12 and a half inch strips of material. I have folded over one short edge and then press that like a strap. And I'm going to stitch down that open edge and across that little short edge to create a long skinny tie. And I have two of those. And the raw edge of each tie is going to get positioned at center towards the base of your circle. You can have that overlap about an inch, three quarters of an inch, and go ahead and stitch that in place so that it doesn't shift using just a quarter inch seam allowance. Do the same thing with the second one. So the finished edge comes in towards the center and the raw edge hangs over the end. You want to make sure that these ties are tucked out of the way and the ends do not shift and get caught in your exterior stitching. So I just like to bundle mine up in the middle and pin those. And then now we're going to bring over the remaining 12 inch circle which is backed with the quilt batting and position that on top of this circle. Maintaining the integrity of that circle and we are going to mark a little three inch opening where we will be turning this. And I'm going to stitch using three eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around my circle. That opening where you're going to turn is preferably in the top right hand quadrant. So if you divided this circle into fourths, it would be at the center of the top quadrant. Just be mindful as you approach your zipper teeth so you don't break a needle. You can always hand crank through those or lift up the presser foot and hop the zipper teeth. And then once you are satisfied with your seam allowance there, go ahead and trim everything up to a quarter inch. And then once you get that trimmed, you can reach inside and um, remove those pins that you have on the inside. Now if you look in there and you're like, oh my gosh, I've locked myself out. Don't panic. You might be coming in from the interior of the pocket. And in that case, you're going to hit the zipper, which you should. 
You want to make sure that you're coming in on top of the pocket and that's where you're going to find your ties, okay? These ties are going to help you turn this right side out. All right, and then after you have pressed, you should have something that still very much looks like a circle. And you're gonna have that little opening there where we turned. You're going to need to top stitch all the way around your project using a very scant seam allowance, like an eighth of an inch or less. To avoid breaking a needle here, you can stop short of that zipper and back stitch, break the thread, and continue on the other side. And voila, you have a lovely little clutch for your art supplies or anything else that is special to you. You can carry that with the tie up or the tie down. It does not really make a difference because you have those full zipper pockets. Another option is to tie that so that the zipper is facing out. It's also very cute. So I want to thank you all for sewing with me. This turned out awesome. I love it. I hope you enjoyed the clutch series here at Sewspire. Next month we are going to be sewing messenger bags. I'm super excited to revisit the seven chakra tote. I also want to revisit the wax canvas messenger and the original messenger tote tutorial, which has like some 600,000 views on it. It's amazing. So we will be sewing a lot of really great messenger bags in the month of November. Many of those can definitely work for the men in your life, uh, in particular anybody who's a commuter or a student. So depending upon your fabric selection, you can totally make those unisex. So that's exciting for us. Um, we have a couple get togethers in the Sospire Patreon group before the end of the year. And then for the month of December, we will be focused on a last minute holiday gift ideas. I will be coming at you with lots of great gifts for everybody in the family and the neighborhood for that matter. So if you haven't had a chance yet, please do give the video a thumbs up. That's how I know you like the content and you appreciate the time and effort that goes into making these tutorials for you. And then please subscribe to the channel. That's really important because that's how we get indexed in the algorithm and we can grow this community and I can continue to bring these awesome videos to you. All right, so just go ahead, like, like, subscribe, subscribe, and that would be amazing. I will see you next Friday, 12 noon Eastern time to kick off our messenger bag series. Until then, as always, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. I hope you have an awesome week and I'll see you soon.